The International Shopping List Test, which we call the ISLT, is a verbal list learning test. Three trials, 12 words, and a delayed recall. The ISLT was developed in order to allow us to provide valid and reliable assessments of episodic memory in individuals who didn't share our culture or our language. One of the limitations with all tests of cognition and indeed all tests of memory is largely we develop them within the context of an English speaking environment and then seek to translate those to uh, so that we can work with people from other cultures. And of course in clinical trials we're not seeking to extend these instruments to use in Western Europe, we need to actually to be able to use them in Asia and in South America and in Eastern Europe, where linguistic and cultural differences actually impose quite significant limitations on our ability to translate our instruments. So the ISLT was developed to say, could we provide a context that was fair and uniform, irrespective of the language or the culture from which the person came? So when we developed the ISLT, what we thought was rather than developing a common vocabulary or a common set of stimuli that we then translated, we sought a context that we thought was uniform across cultures and we took shopping lists as our metaphor. Mainly we argued that those items that were commonly available in different cultures would provide words that were high imaginability and high frequency. And whilst they might differ between cultures, those aspects of their use within the language or within the culture would be equivalent. In Alzheimer's disease, we're finding the ISLT to be useful in guiding decision making in a number of areas of clinical trial practice. First, as an endpoint, the ISLT has been shown to be resistant to practice effects and sensitive to the deterioration in memory that characterizes both the preclinical and prodromal and indeed the clinically recognized stages of Alzheimer's disease. And in fact, a number of sponsors now have made decisions about the safety and the efficacy of their drugs based on the extent to which they've changed performance on the ISLT over time. The second important area where it's been used is as a tool to identify those people with memory impairment who may themselves be at risk for disease. So in clinical trials of prodromal disease, we're having to find those individuals in the community who may uh, carry a positive biomarker, which would then allow them to be enrolled in the trials. But that's actually quite a tricky, uh, difficult situation to do. So what we do is we begin to, with assessments of episodic memory in community settings, and we use the ISLT to do that. And in individuals whose performance on the ISLT is poor, these are considered then appropriate for investigation for their suitability in, for enrolment in those clinical trials. Of course, that suitability depends on the extent to which they have abnormal levels of amyloid. But we do find that poor performance on the ISLT is a good predictor of that circumstance.